Okay, let's talk a little bit about some uh, HPT, some modern designs. This is in the context of us having just explored different, four different designs. One where we had a, a bigger band gap in the uh, emitter, um, and we paid a price uh, of having a, a spike in the conduction band edge. Then we learned how to grade um, the junction and eliminate the spike and increase the barrier still here. Uh, then we built in a, a, a ramp in the, in the uh, base, so we had a graded base. And ultimately, we also expressed interest and justified why you might want to have a larger band gap in the uh, collector as well. So let's put this all together and see how it uh, sums up and what uh, we try to achieve. So, here's the expression we had written down for FT. We want to get to high frequencies, That's, uh, and we want to maintain a gain at very high frequencies. And what does the HPT allow us to do? So we reduce the base transit time um, by building in a ramp, for example, a graded base. And uh, that allows us to uh, uh, increase the base doping. Okay, Before, we wouldn't want to increase the base doping, but now we can, and if we do that, we make the device uh, uh, have less modulation of the base, so it's less um, bias dependent um, on the device performance. Uh, there's also punch through that's being reduced, and the early voltage was getting uh, larger. All right, now um, we had uh, discussed that we can increase the collector doping now because we can now we ramped up the base doping. Remember, or early on we had always sketched the three doping levels like this. This was um, emitter doping, base doping, collector doping. They were in this order. We talked about an inverted um, doping here where the base can be higher than the um, emitter. And that means you can also bring up the collector doping like this. Okay? And if you bring up the collector doping, there's all kinds of interesting things uh, that happen there. Um, uh, you won't have a, a junction loss because you know. Um, can control the, the junction better. That means your Kirk current goes to higher values. And that means instead of kinking off here, uh, you can ramp up the current higher. And as you ramp up the current higher, you can go orders of magnitude up in your FT. Okay, So if you can crank up your collector current uh, dramatically by shifting and I the IK to higher values on a log scale, you can increase your FT dramatically. Okay? Now, if you increase the doping in your collector, you increase the depletion uh, regions in your collector, and that means you separate your uh, depletion region charges further from another. That means you reduce your junction capacitances. So that's an additional bonus. All right. Now, finally, we can also afford to decrease base width because we had ramped up the doping, so there is not much of a, a penalty anymore of punch through uh, because the doping was ramped up, and we can control the junctions tighter. Okay. So overall, doing this band gap engineering affords you all kinds of design uh, explorations that you couldn't do before. Now, compare those concepts to what people research today, and this is actually reasonably old. Look at this fantastic, complicated structure. Right? It has an indium phosphide emitter, it has an in-gas base, and an indium, aluminum, gallium, arsenide, collector, and base grading. The, the layer structure is just fascinating. It's an indium phosphide technology uh, such that you can have an amplifier uh, like this directly uh, with the optical modulators that couple the signal in and out of optical fibers. And you can do that in the single technology. 
indium gallium arsenide has a high doping contact that's quite typical in these uh, class of devices and notice how silicon is a doping in 3.5 right we had early on in the course talk about um, silicon uh, as being a dopant either p and n type dopant in 3.5 materials well these are the 3.5 materials we talked about in the very beginning of the course here are two other examples they're actually not that young anymore um, and this is 1999 from uh, a conference on indium phosphide materials and this is IEDM which is the premier electrical engineering device conference every December every year so just by uh, squinting your eyes you can see that people are really exploring the band gap engineering and material engineering that we discussed in the previous sections I'm not going to go into detail what the various capabilities are, but what people are seeking out is being able to grow these materials with uh, MOCVD, which is a growth technique that is much faster than, say, molecular beam epitaxy, so it's suitable for uh, commercial uh, growth of these kind of uh, devices. And um, there's even indium antimonide now here, uh, gallium antimonide in the system, um, so you bring in rather complicated uh, material systems in order to tune these devices. All right, so let's summarize what we've done in this overall section on HPTs. Um, with the wider band gap in the emitter, you can now base uh, dope the base heavily. And um, that meant um, you don't have punch through, you have no uh, base modulation anymore, so your early voltage is large. And um, you can also have now moderate emitter doping uh, as well. So you don't have this uh, requirement anymore that the emitter doping must be larger than the base doping. Um, if you have a wide band gap uh, collector, you can ramp up voltages um, there on the base collector junction. That means you have less avalanche, you can run more power, you can increase the current, you don't lose um, uh, the collector off um, breakdown, and you have a symmetric operation if you so choose. And um, you can build fascinating, complicated uh, band gap engineered devices uh, where you have potential landscapes um, that are interesting where you build uh, launcher ramps for electrons. Uh, you can uh, grade the base, you can uh, uh, eliminate the band spikes or introduce some if you need some. Um, and uh, these kind of devices are actively pursued as well towards terahertz applications. So this is still a, a field of research. This is not done. There's complications with heating and contact problems. So. This is a pretty cool opportunity if you're interested in high frequency devices uh, this is where advancements still are being made today. So with that, I think we're ramp, uh, wrapping up section 27 on HPTs. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.